Hey geeks, welcome to episode 2 of On the Comic Edge. I'm your host, Edge, and I'm coming to you a little later than I thought, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, we have some good... Com- it's Wednesday, so there's different comics out. These are from the previous uh, poll. Uh, but, hey, uh, I'll, I should be getting down to the comic store tomorrow, I think. So hopefully, I'll have a show up for you later this week. As well as this one. This is good. This is good times. We're, we're rolling. We're rolling. Anyway, episode two. As I said, I'm your host, Edge. Thank you for joining me. And we're getting off the bat with Uncanny X-Force 5. Um, this is the beginning of a story arc called Deathlock Nation. Uh, a lot of people probably aren't familiar with the character of Deadlock. I know I am not. Um, he hasn't really been around at all for quite a long time and uh, I mean a quick check of any wiki can bring you up to speed not an incredibly interesting character in my opinion but what they're doing here is very interesting they're bringing things back uh, sorry they writing Rick Remender uh, art team of uh, Ribic, Lucas and Wilson Basically, what we have here is they're talking about the world. Now, what is the world? The world is the um, the origin of the weapon um, of the Weapon Plus program. It was their uh, it was their lab, their home. It existed slightly outside of normal time. They were able to manipulate time in there, so there was a lot of stuff. Now this originally deals with as you can see from the cover we're dealing with phantom x getting getting royally pwned by a bunch of people who don't look quite normal as you can see you you know there's the different eyes and there's some stuff going and you know there's since when does spider-man have a claw what's going on anyway so basically what the idea is that uh these people have been infected i don't want to give away too much but it's you know what it's a worthwhile read the art doesn't blow me away except for a splash page, which I'm not going to spoil for you because it's kind of loopy. Um, but it's, it, you know, it's only a few pages in. It's pretty good. It's a good read. The art is good. Not spectacular, but good. Um, Phantom X is a very interesting character who I've been waiting for them to kind of get into. I knew that they were going to play him up a bit more. Um when uh the last uh, in the last issue when he uh he's the only one who's got the guts to put a hole into uh into kid Col- uh kid apocalypse's uh noggin that was cool that was very interesting you see the aftermath of that um some people who are interested in the deadpool character as an actual character and not just a, a conveyance of comedy uh stunts you'll want to pick up this issue uh, there's also, you know what, I, I do want to say one thing about the art. Deadpool has a mask on, and so does uh, Phantom X, actually. But when their mouths are really big, or when there's a lot of emotion behind that mask, you see it stretch in a very realistic, sort of vinyl way. Um, that is something you don't see a lot in comics. I really like it. It brings an authenticity, a uniqueness to, this, uh, to the um, artwork. Uh, good on them for doing that. Moving on. Um, it's no shock that I'm a huge fan of the Marvel Cosmic. And one character that I've been really interested in them bringing back is Silver Surfer. So we're dealing with Volume 1 here. Now we have some pretty big characters right here. We have Norn Rad, the Silver Surfer here. We have Galactus, who is coming off of... Um, what he did in uh, the Thanos Imperative, which I believe the I believe the trade paperback is coming out early next month. So definitely a pickup for me. Should be a pickup for you. Uh, and if you like that, just keep going back with the trades. Keep keep finding out what's going on in the Marvel Cosmic Universe because everything since Annihilation has been absolute freaking gold. Um, so we have, uh, and, and also, sorry, we have uh, the High Evolutionary, who sh- kind of shows up in the second half. Um, it's, it's a really interesting way of starting it off. He's, he's getting disconnected from 
the uh, from the universe uh, he sort of walled himself off because of what he has to do to maintain the balance uh, in the universe which is basically serving Galactus um, so he's basically feeding our sun not like Galactus isn't going to eat all of our sun but he's reducing its lifetime by about a billion years which is a lot uh, but Galactus being near dead and if he dies the universe dies or something like that um, it's very important that he stay alive so here's a billion years worth of star I'm gonna go hang out on earth for a bit so he's he's hanging out on earth and you know stuff ensues uh, which usually you know stuff tends to ensue in comics um, and the high evolutionary comes out later I'm not gonna spoil too much Greg Pak is a wonderful writer he gets he gets the the odd predicament that the surfer is put into and I'm very interested to see where he comes out especially what happens right at the end won't spoil it but I'm trying not to spoil things for you guys I really am it's very difficult uh, in this show uh, I, I know I, I spoiled a bit too much in the last show so don't want to do that again what we have here is a good comic the art team of uh, Sergovia, Lazaba and Quintana Say that three times fast. Good work. Good, bright, deep. Um, here, I'll give you a, a, a. I'll give you something. I'll give you something. That's that. That's pretty good. That's pretty. I would say that's pretty good. So, you know, good work on that. Definitely a pickup. The next one, not so much. Uh, after this, I have a feeling people are going to give me a little crap for uh, hating on DC because the one comic I didn't like last week was The Flash. Actually, no, I didn't like uh, I didn't like the Spawn more. Anyway, I don't have a hate on for DC. I'm getting into uh, the Batman mythos uh, by picking up pretty much everything Batman, which is a bit of a culture shock for me. Uh, but one thing that I've absolutely loved, and I've said this on the show, is I love Green Lantern. I love what they've done with Green Lantern, and I like where it's going, especially Core. Except for 57. It's the ending of a, of a bit of a story arc. The story arc I was enjoying. Um, okay, here's the first problem. Guest starring is lame. Guest starring is very lame. Firestorm is a lame character. <laughs> so you have double lame. Uh, and contrary to internet math, two fails do not make a win because this comic is okay I'm going to spoil it for you um, there's a big fight which turns into a bigger fight um, and there's more fighting and this then there's some angst to cut up the fighting and then at the end one okay um, The main character makes a decision, not the main character, but the main antagonist of this story arc makes a decision that is so unfathomable. Not like, ooh, shot, you know, but why he joins the Sinestro Corps. He joins the man that he dis that he absolutely despises to the point where he has created weapons of awesome power uh, cut himself off from his own people and kidnaps th this guy's daughter just to get him to his planet so that he can kill him and then he joins him he gets beaten not decisively but beaten and it's just I like your spunk. Here's a, a yellow ring. Okay. Put it on. What the hell? It makes absolutely no sense. There was... N there. Um, I'm really hoping they talk about this in the next issue, although I'm pretty sure they won't. Real problems with this, uh, with this, how it ended. It was sort of a boring issue to begin with, and it ended in a really bad way. Is it worth picking up? If you have the rest of the comics, sure. Um, but it's, but don't expect to be blown away. It's really bad. It's, uh, 
I'm trying to remember this guy's name. This is how bad I, uh, uh, the Weaponer. Duh. Right. Yeah, the Weaponer joins the Sinestro Corps. It's lame. It's very, very lame. Oh, and why is uh, Firestorm there? Because he's hunting down Deathstorm. And Deathstorm has the, uh, the White Lantern and he's following the white la white energy. I don't know how Firestorm is doing that, but he manages to find his way onto Cord, and um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I honestly don't know what to say about this comic. It's it sends you for such an odd loop at the end that's neither entertaining or um, or intriguing in any sense of the word do i want to know why he did this no because i know they're never going to explain it and i know that i'm not interested at all i was just getting interested into the character <clears throat> uh, especially the second issue of this uh of, of this story arc where he's sort of treating he's treating sinistro's uh daughter again I'm, her name escapes me uh, but Kyle, uh, Kyle's in love with her, so there's something. Not to, there you go. So he's treating her very well, and he started, and she's starting to get, uh, you know, understand him, and it's sort of a Beauty and the Beast sort of thing. Um, and then the whole thing just goes to, you know. I don't know what to say about that. Anyway. So those are the three comics. I'm going to be dropping by hopefully the, the store next, well, tomorrow, I think. And uh, good stuff. Good stuff ahead. So hope, I don't know what's even in the pull list this week. Uh, so, yeah, it'll be interesting. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, stay geeky.